good day guys. You know who it is. Roland Keith here. And uh, I'm back on the uh, on the ZX, the big ninja. Reason for that is is well summer's over now and um, it's starting to cool off and it's time to jump onto a bike that's a lot warmer. <laughs> so of course what I've done with the M109R is gave it a bit of a clean put it around the side of the shed and I also hooked up my battery tender to it so the maintenance chargers they're absolutely brilliant very easy to wire in and uh, oh boy geez they make your battery last I think the last battery I had on my um, on my maintenance charger lasted me uh, over six years so you know not bad stuff at all but uh, yeah and one of the reasons why I haven't punched out too much content so far this year is you know basically because I've had some health issues uh, but slowly working through them and uh, yeah with a bit of luck as the as the weeks and months roll on that'll get a bit better but uh, yeah as far as the ninja goes when I actually uh, when I actually started using the uh, M109R and uh, because it was basically summertime I uh, parked up the Ninja in the same spot where the 109 is now hooked it up to the maintenance charger and uh, roughly every three weeks or so I um, I like to just start the bike up and let it run for a little bit and uh, consequently I did that three weeks after I parked up the Ninja and uh, lo and behold because I just normally check everything out I had absolutely no front brake so and that was interesting because you know the first thing I did was just dive into the forums and see what people thought my first gut instinct was oh well, the master cylinders are uh, gone and uh, I either need to put a kit through it or something but it was interesting when I went on the forums there was all sorts of all sorts of really bizarre reasons why your front brake on one of these bikes uh, you know all of a sudden just goes um, but the bottom line is uh, it's basically just two seals um, which you can buy them independently and you know, split the master cylinder apart, pull the piston out, and put the two seals on. But uh, you know, really, for the cost of it, it's ninety dollars. Um, I got a a whole little kit to do the rebuild the master cylinder. So that was pretty cool. Uh, wasn't in any great rush because you know this bike wasn't registered. But. Uh, as summer come to an end I thought I'd um, pull the kit out and uh, strip down the front brakes and uh, rebuild them so now Ninja front brakes are every little bit as good as what they were uh, when they're new which is great because on one of these bikes it's uh, something you really need so uh, yeah you definitely need your stopping power but uh, yeah, easy job. So if you've got one of these bikes and you hop on it one day and go to ride it and press on the front brake and you've got absolutely nothing um, and uh, you go and have a bit of a look online and find out what it may be, well, you know, don't stress too much. It's just a $90 overhaul kit for your master cylinder and you're back to square one, which is really good. I did notice, like, just at the end of, uh, just at the end of spring when I parked this bike up, the last, probably two times I rode it, I noticed that um, my front brakes were just a, I don't know, a little bit spongier, 
I didn't really pick it up straight away. I just thought, ah, oh, maybe I'm just getting used to the sensitivity of them because they are very sensitive brakes. Um, but uh, obviously, um, the seals had uh, just let go because of their age. Um, I don't think they've been ever replaced before, not that I can remember. So, yeah, it's not too bad for 77,000 kilometres. Um, a, uh, a kit through the master cylinder is pretty good. Everything else was absolutely fine. And one of the telltale giveaways as to it was the master cylinder was the fact that I just had absolutely no leaks at all anywhere. So I thought to myself, well, it has to be the seals on the piston in the master cylinder. And sure enough, when I pulled it out, uh, when I pulled out the piston, split the, split the whole unit, separated the piston, felt the seals, the seals were rock hard, absolutely rock hard. Um, yeah, so uh, I thought, oh, well, I'm on a winner here for me 90 bucks and some, what are it, 18, $19 or something or other for some brake fluid and yeah, Bob was my uncle. Job done. So I'm very happy about that because between you, me and the gate post, Riding the Ninja compared to riding the M109R is uh, is just a hell of a lot more refined, I'm afraid. I mean, the comfort level on this bike just alone, you know, absolutely blows the M109 out of the park. I mean, don't get me wrong, the M109R is a hell of a fun bike to ride. And she's got a bit of grunt. Oh, I've got to make a stop here. And she's got a bit of grunt. Um, but compared to something like this, it, it's, yeah, it's just an unrefined animal. Um, and, yeah, one of the issues I've been having, you know, this year is uh, a really, really bad back. And, uh, quite frankly, the ergonomics of this bike and just the sheer comfort of this bike, um, enables me to to sort of ride around with a bad back quite quite successfully so that's good plus uh, I just enjoy the all-out fun factor of this thing because it's an absolute street beast so and it's really really funny when you ride this thing around because you just play with people you know they, they must think oh wow he's, he's got it maxed out and he's really got it cranked but trust me these bikes um, they will, <laughs> you know, they will fly uh, in such a way that uh, you know, any other bike to keep up with it is uh, working its guts off. As you can see, it's just no effort. Bloody awesome machines these. All out comfort, ticks that box completely. Um, ergonomics, yeah, it, it's, it's you know, super comfortable if you've got a bad back like me in terms of the seating position. You're, you're just a tiny bit forward. You're definitely not upright. You're definitely not super sport stance. Um, and that's what confuses people with these bikes. They, uh, the comfort level of them is, is so high that they get confused and they go, well, that's a sport tourer. Well, unfortunately, if you're labeling one of these as a sports tourer, it's a big X. You got it wrong. They're a hyper bike in every sense of the, in every sense of the theme of it. And, uh, their rival is, is of course the high Suzuki Hayabusa um, and they're a hyperbike in the hyperbike class as well yeah sure the, the old ZX's are getting a little bit you know old in style by today's standards because they've been around a very long time however uh, in terms of what performance gets squirted out on the rear wheel uh, these things are right up there 
in fact very much surpassing many many of the other bikes that are still currently uh, sitting on the market today so yeah I'm happy to be back on the Ninja it's good for me at the moment it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of comfort and just to just to mosey around you know normal with normal traffic I mean these bikes do it with absolute ease um, one of the most relaxed bikes I've ever ridden in my life to be quite frank one finger braking when the brakes are working properly um, and you haven't lost all your pressure in the front uh, one or two millimeters on the on the throttle and you can just fly past everybody uh, if you like a bit of fun and pull up to the lights and someone in there 1000 or 600 is going to want to give you a bit of a run you just short shift it and quarter throttle it and you've just absolutely blitzed them it's almost comical really it really is almost comical um, and like I said I'm convinced uh, someone in that situation must be thinking oh wow you guys you, you're really trying that thing hard yeah you know, you're, you're giving it everything it's got but holy crap to give one of these things everything it's got you're on <laughs> you're on one wheel for the first four gears uh, and it's yeah you know, pretty bloody damn impossible to do so so one of the reasons for this particular ride today was well there's a couple of reasons really uh, but anyway one of them was um, I switching from the M109R to the Ninja in terms of my camera setup on the Ninja I mean on the M109R rather um, of course that's got tubular handlebars and all the GoPro mounts are absolutely spot on for tubular handlebars however the Ninja hasn't got really anything tubular on it at all my mirrors well they're kind of like a blade of steel um, and I was I've, I've got I've got a couple of different sort of assorted GoPro kits you know with all multiple different um, attachments and accessories and whatnot and it's it's taken me quite a while to sieve through them all and go oh, okay I'm gonna try this and see how that works and see if it'll stay on the bloody wing wing of the mirror so um, yeah I've come up with this combination at first I had it on my right hand mirror but for some reason it was vibrating too much and I thought the image stabilization would probably be having a hemorrhage trying to manage it um, so I've just swapped it over to the left hand side and the camera itself doesn't seem to be shaking as much which is good so yeah I just hope the footage um, just hope the footage comes out pretty good oh wow look at the riffles down the side of that uh, bloody out back there Ooh, I don't know if the camera pick it up but that's had a hard time yeah so I thought I'd just do a you know I'm feeling reasonable today um, not that I had a hell of a lot of sleep with my back I can tell you that but I thought well I'll give this combination a bit of a go on the GoPro see if I can mount it on this bike somewhere successful I don't really want want it on my helmet um, because the GoPro 9 compared to the GoPro 3 is absolutely like having a brick on the side of your head it weighs heaps more um, and I found it bloody annoying so I wanted to mount it on the bike and yeah trying to do that with all the mounting uh, all the mounting accessories that's really designed for a tubular handlebar setup that I've got uh, yeah was challenging to say the least but I, I think I've got something I mean it's still shaking around when I look at the camera but hopefully the image stabilization can knock that out it's 
So I'm just doing a very easy sort of run on some main roads. Nothing spectacular. Not only that, this is probably the first real time or opportunity I've had to actually make sure that the front brakes on the Ninja are working 100%. <coughs> so far I'm very, very happy with them. They're good, they feel nice. Um, I'm probably coming juice, I don't know, soonish, I don't know how many k's. I did have a look and I've got a bit of meat left on the front pads, but it's, it's probably not a bad idea for me to get some fresh ones. When I say got a bit of meat, I've probably got about 60% left on the front pads and I only like to let them run down to around about, about where they are now, 60%, and then change them. And the primary reason for that is, is that the thinner your brake pads get, the easier and quicker they heat up, naturally so. Um, and if you're doing some reasonable speed, and you want to slow down um, you do not want overheating overheating brake pads that are fading on you so uh, yeah I might organize a couple of or a set of fresh pads for the front whack them in might even just touch up the bleeding just to make sure it's all good and uh, yeah then she'll be as good as gold it had a full service this bike had a full service before I parked it up uh, last autumn so it's all ready to go but uh, yeah the uh, M109R uh, I'll probably I'd like to think at some stage during this year uh, during the cooler months I'll slap some registration on it again because here in here in Australia we can do it in three month blocks um, and uh, yeah, cruise it around because it is it's a lot of fun, the M109R. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, take that for a bit of a cruise. And when that's re registered again, I'll, I'll drop that in, get a full service done on that so that that's ready again for next summer, too. So I'm just aimlessly riding around main reason is is because it's probably the first ride I've had in a few weeks plus I wanted to get a video out oh the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I've hit 700 subscribers although probably by the time I post this video up uh, <laughs> I'll probably be back down to 698 or something or other but anyway nevertheless um, thank you subscribers thank you very much for your support uh, it means a lot to me. Um, I, I, I try and put out content that's a little different, a little bit out there. Uh, but it's stuff I enjoy and I figure, well, if I like it, if I'm happy with it, maybe somebody else might be too. So if you think my content's rubbish or you don't like it or whatever, hey, give me a comment. I'm up for bad comments or negative comments. i got no issues with that at all. Um, yeah, just... Uh, let me know what you what you've been thinking about my content. Oof. Yeah, and it's just feeling good actually. Love the way this thing moves for its size and its length. Um, yeah, these things are pretty amazing. So I'm going to head down towards the beach, my usual sort of pull-up place down the beach here, and. Yeah, just stop and get off and stretch my legs, stretch my back. And I'll call it quits at that. So, I hope all you guys have been well. And again, I do appreciate all the support that I've had with comments and likes and subscriptions. That's brilliant. And yeah, hopefully uh, as this year rolls on, I'll be able to punch out a bit more stuff. All right, guys, take care. Take care. Be good. There you go.